Welcome everyone to Instant InDesign, the video podcast for learning template design and high-speed production skills. I'm your host, Gabriel Powell. And this is Episode 9, Automating Layouts with the Easy Catalog Plugin for InDesign, Part 3. In Episode 7, I introduced Easy Catalog. Then in Episode 8, I showed you how to use Easy Catalog to import data into InDesign and configure it. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to transform the mock-up layout of the catalog into a production-ready template. I'll go ahead and make this panel quite a bit smaller. And I'll move it up so that it's out of the way. And really, I only need one of these sample products. So I'll go ahead and delete all of them off of the page except for one. And now I'll zoom in on this product. Next, I need to determine where all of this data is going to be placed. To do that, you use field specifiers. I'll go ahead and insert a field specifier for the product name. I'll just select my sample text, and then with it selected, I'll hold the command key, or on the PC, you'll want to hold the control key, and then I'll double click the product name field within the data panel. That'll insert the field specifier. And next, I'll insert a field specifier for the description copy. So I'll select all of my sample text for that. I'll scroll over until I can find the copy field. And once again, I'll hold the command key or the control key on the PC as I double click that. Now, I should point out that I've already taken the time to create and apply paragraph styles to all of this text. This is a really important step. Because after paginating an entire catalog, you can update the paragraph style and globally update the formatting if necessary. All right, I'll go ahead and insert a field specifier for the image now. I'll just select that placeholder graphics frame with my selection tool, and I'll scroll all the way to the right of this data panel. There's the product image field. I'll command or control double click it. And notice that the field name appears at the bottom of the placeholder box. Now this is not going to print, just keep that in mind. Next, I need to insert the field specifiers for the table. But I only need one row because Easy Catalog will create additional rows as it needs to. So I'm going to delete these additional rows. I'll right click or control click on a single button mouse and I'll choose delete and then row. Now I'll select my sample item number, command or control double click the item field, insert the description. And I'll do the same for the unit and the price. So it's as easy as that. There are just a few more steps that I need to take in order to complete this product style. I'm going to zoom out a bit. I'll press Command minus or Control minus on the PC a couple times. And now I need to group each of these individual frames together. And this is an important step because this defines this entire grouping as a single product style. With all of these frames selected, I'll go up to the object menu and I'll choose group. So I can start testing this. Let's see how it's going to work. I'll go ahead and scroll down to the building materials section. And within the building panels subsection, I'll go ahead and drag one of these products on over. I'll drag this first one, plastic area wall which contains three items. So this will create three rows in the table. And it's working. All of the field specifiers have been replaced with actual data. I'll go ahead and undo that, Command or Control Z, and I'll paginate this next product. I'll go ahead and drag it right on top of my product style. And this one has created seven rows, but notice that two rows are missing because this text frame was too small to contain all of them. Now, you don't want to have to manually resize that text frame so the entire table fits. So let me show you how to do that with Easy Catalog. I'll undo that, Command or Control Z. And then I'm going to go up to the Window menu and choose Pagination Rules, which is a panel that's installed when you install Easy Catalog. Down here is a fitting option. If I double click that, you can see that there are several options for fitting the frame to the content, the content to the frame, and so forth. I'm going to cancel this, and I just want to make sure that only that text frame is selected. Since it's part of a group, I need to select it with the Direct Selection tool. 
I'll go ahead and select it and double click the fitting option. And since I want the frame to fit to the table, I'm going to choose frame depth to content depth and click OK. So now watch what happens when I drag a product that contains multiple items. This particular product contains nine items and the frame has increased its height to accommodate the entire table. If I paginate a product with fewer items, that frame will resize and become smaller as well. So I'll paginate plastic area wall. It contains only three items. So the text frame decreases in size to fit perfectly to that table. Now there is one more problem that I'm noticing. I just happen to know that this particular product is not on sale but the sale logo has stayed. So in order to deal with this, I've created a column within the data called status. Here in the status column are two options, normal or sale. So let's find a product that's on sale. This particular item is on sale and you can see that it is because sale is listed in the status column. So here's what I'd like to happen. I'd like the sale logo to be deleted if the product is not on sale. But if it is on sale, I'd like that sale logo to stay. To do this, all I have to do is set up an action, which is easily accomplished with Easy Catalog. I'll go ahead and undo that last pagination. And I'll select the sale logo with the direct selection tool because this frame is grouped with all of the other frames in the product style. And now I'll go to the Pagination Rules panel and at the very bottom of the panel is an area for actions. I can create a new action by clicking the Create New icon at the bottom of the panel. So to create this new action, I'll start by filling in the field name, which is Status, and then I'll choose an operator from this operator menu. I'm going to choose Does Not Contain because if the status column does not contain the value of sale, I'd like that logo to be deleted, which would be the action. And that's all there is to it. I'll go ahead and click OK, and my new action is listed at the bottom of this panel. I'll go ahead and hide the panel, and now I'll test pagination again. I'll just select this product, and I'll drag it to my product style. And since this particular product is on sale, that sale logo has been maintained. I'll undo this, and this time I'll paginate a product that's not on sale, and it should be deleted. And it works. There was just one other problem that I noticed when testing the pagination with the other product. I'll undo this. I'll paginate this product, and I'd like you to notice that there's this symbol in here, less than and greater than symbols surrounding the letter R. This actually needs to be a registered trademark symbol. So here's what I'm going to do to fix this. First of all, I'll undo that last pagination. And then I'm going to locate the product name field name right up here. I'm going to hold the option key, which is the alt key on the PC, and double click that field name. This will give you quick access to the field options. Here in the general category, I'm going to set up a cleansing option and I'd like Easy Catalog to replace a less than symbol followed by an R and a greater than symbol with an actual registered trademark symbol which you can enter on the Mac by pressing Option R or if you're on a PC, Control Alt R. I'd like to set up another cleansing option so I'll enter a semicolon and this time I just happen to know that I have a symbol for copyright symbols and that would be less than followed by a C and a greater than symbol, so that should equal the copyright symbol. That's Option G on a Mac, which is Control Alt C on a PC. And that's all there is to it. I'll go ahead and click OK, and now I can paginate this product. And the registered trademark is being properly inserted. I just love Easy Catalog's cleansing options. All right, I'll go ahead and undo that to go back to my original product style and I need to finish up this template. So I'll zoom out to fit the spread into the window and I need to minimize this data panel. I'm just going to click right here in the gray area to minimize it. So the next step is to create a library. From the file menu, I'll choose new and then library. I could also choose easy catalog library if I want. And I'm just going to place this on my desktop and I'm going to call it my product style. 
I'll click Save, and a new library panel is created. So next, I'll just drag my product style from the page into that panel. Now here's another tip. I always like to cut my product style from this template, make a new document, and paste it here into this document, and then save it as my product style. So this way I can always go back and make changes to the product style here. And the library item should be a byproduct of the original product style. This way you always have a backup if you make a mistake. I'll switch back to my mock-up layout. And now I'd like to complete this template. I'm going to select all of these elements on the page and cut them from the page because they've been placed on a document page and they really should have been placed on a master page. So I'm going to go up to the edit menu and choose paste in place which will paste all of those elements into the same XY position. Next I need to create four text frames and link them together. So I'll create one text frame here and I'm just going to link that to four other text frames that I create. And I just need to create one more. This step here that I've just done is very important if you want InDesign to automatically create additional pages as the products are inserted. And now there's just one other thing that I need to do to complete this template. I need to insert field specifiers for the category and subcategories and then set them up as furniture data. So to do that, I'll just quickly select the category, command or control, double click the category field name in the panel, and I'll do the same for the subcategory. And now I need to do that for the placeholders on the right facing page. So next I'll set these up as furniture data and to do that I'm going to select both this category and subcategory frame with my selection tool with both frames selected. I'll go to the pagination rules panel and here I'm going to double click this paginate option. I want to set them up as furniture data so I'll choose that option and now I have another option below that just appeared populate using. Now I want to populate these two frames using the last item on the page. I'll go ahead and zoom out and set the furniture data options up on this other page over here. With both frames selected, I'll set these up as furniture data. And this time it's correctly paginating with the first item on the page, so I'll leave that option alone. Now I'll go back to page 2 and 3 and I'm going to override this first frame holding shift and command or control shift on the PC. I'll click that first frame to unlock it or override it. And now I'm going to save this into InDesign's template file format. And I'm going to call this my final template. I'll just save it into the desktop. And now watch if I open up the document a new untitled document will be created, leaving the original template intact. So next, I need to finalize my product style. I'll minimize this data panel again, and in order to take advantage of Easy Catalog's pagination module, which will allow you to paginate multiple products in a single mouse click, I need to specify the pagination rules for my product style. So I'll open up the pagination rules panel, and I'm going to paginate with group data. Remember, I grouped all of my data in my data panel. And since I've grouped it, I'm telling Easy Catalog to paginate this product style with group data. So in order for that to work, there's one more very important piece of information that I need to specify, and that's the group name. I would like only one product and all of its items to paginate this product style. And Remember, here in my group options, I've specified that all of my products should be grouped by product sort. So this is the group name that I need to use. I'll just go ahead and type that in. I'll double click the group name option and I'll type in product sort and click OK. 
and that's all there is to it. So I can hide the pagination rules panel. And since I've made those changes, I need to update my product style in the library because this library item contains the old product style. So with the product style selected on the page, the library item selected in the library, I'll go to the library panel menu and choose update library item. And now the library item has been updated with the product style that I had selected. So now I'm ready to test the automatic pagination. I'll go back to the Untitled 2 document, position my cursor within this first frame, and I'll select some data. This time I'll select the Building Panels subsection, and I'll choose Paginate from the Data Panel menu. I'll locate the library that contains my product style. That just happens to be on the desktop. And now that that's loaded, I want it to paginate within the text flow. I'll click OK. And it worked. I'll press Tab to hide all of my panels. And take a look at that. Easy Catalog just paginated all of those products. And if I want, I can continue paginating more. I can click to place my cursor at the end of this last product. In fact, I'm going to press Tab to bring my panels back first and then I'll click back within that frame. I'm going to choose a different subsection. This time I'll choose driveway coding. It only contains 10 products. I'll choose paginate. Click OK and now I'm paginating that subcategory. Next I just need to update the furniture data. I'll go back to the data panel menu and choose update furniture. And now I can be sure that all of the category and subcategories are properly specified up here at the top edge of each page. One thing that I really like about Easy Catalog is that all of these products are flowing within the text frames that I established on the master page. So notice that I can select all of them. I could select a particular product and delete it because really that product is flowing within that text frame as an anchored object. If I select one of these products with the selection tool and delete it, all of the other products reflow to take up that available space. And another thing that's great about Easy Catalog is that after paginating a document, all of that data remains connected to the database. So you can make changes in the database and quickly update your InDesign document with those changes. As you can see, Easy Catalog is an amazing product. It allows you to quickly set up a template and automate the production of a publication. And the best part is, with Easy Catalog, you don't have to know a programming language, yet the results are just as powerful. Now, there are many other things that Easy Catalog can do, so if you'd like more information about Easy Catalog, visit the website 65bit.com. And if you have any questions about using Easy Catalog or any other InDesign feature, I'm more than happy to answer them go to instantindesign.com and click the Ask a Question button.